Hello everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes. I want you to imagine it's 1978. A lot's happening this year. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy premieres on BBC Radio 4. The Yorkshire Ripper is at large. The first IVF baby was born. And Ipswich Town beat Arsenal in a shocking FA Cup final at Wembley. You're on your way to town to pick up the debut albums from Dire Straits and Toto. And the latest issue of Electronics Today International. ETI for short. ETI was an electronics magazine for hobbyists and tinkerers who were interested in making and understanding their own devices at home. The magazine ran in the UK from April 1972 when it cost just 20p until 1999 when it cost £2.75. At this point it was purchased by Everyday Practical Electronics. The magazine looked brilliant. Every issue contains schematics and instructions for building your own gadgets. Examples include guitar fuzz boxes, homebrew video game machines, an electronic one arm bandit and a do-it-yourself laser. There was even funny cartoons like this. Anyway, why was the October 1978 issue important? Well, you see, this was the issue that announced the ETI Triton. The Triton was an affordable-ish single board 8080 based build at home 8 bit computer. The single board design was quite special, although the Triton wasn't the first. The Commodore Kim 1 and PET were already out there. And let's be honest, the PET definitely looks better, but you didn't get to build it yourself. The Triton was the result of a collaboration between Electronics Today International and Transam Components Limited, presumably with ETI providing the marketing heft and Transam the components. The machine was designed by Mike Hughes and it really was one of the very first home computers along with the Commodore PET and the Apple II. There's comparatively little information out there so I hope I can help to preserve the heritage of the Triton with these videos. Here's what I think makes the Triton special. In the November issue of ETI the computer was fully described. Everything from the board layout, system diagrams, circuit schematics to full descriptions of the graphical character set the PSU and the various connectors. They really laid it all out there for just 45p. The January 79 issue finally included a mail order page, offering the complete kit of parts for just £286, proudly stating, building a better computer wasn't easy, but we did it. This first edition of the machine included 2k worth of tiny basic commands, stored on board in ROM, 64 graphic characters, 3K of ROM and 2K of RAM, expandable up to 4K of each, really not bad for 1979, as well as tape I.O., a TV interface and an expansion port allowing up to 64 kilobytes of memory, all on a single PCB. All you had to do was get this mail order slip in the post. You had the option to buy the entire kit or just the PCB for 50 quid you could then buy all the components separately. Soon after, this advert appeared, laying out the various add-ons that had been developed for the Triton. These expansions were dependent on this handy motherboard, which had its own power supply and contained eight sockets for add-on cards. Options included 8K of static RAM and an EEPROM card with room for eight 8K2708 EEPROM chips. Of course, Fully detailed schematics were readily available. As we'll see later, an EEPROM programmer was also made available. In the August 79 issue of ETI, a tiered option strategy emerged, with the base machine we're already familiar with branded as L4.1, with its 2K basic and 1K monitor installed to the main board. Option 2, or L5.1, came with an expanded 2.5K basic and a 1.5K monitor, also installed to the main board in ROM, and option 3, or L6.1, which had a whopping 7K basic along with the same 1.5K monitor. This huge amount of firmware had to be kept on an EEPROM expansion card, which meant that this option came with an expansion motherboard and an EEPROM card, and it cost an eye-watering £400. Practical Computing reviewed the Triton in their December 1979 issue, 
stating that the Triton is impressive and advising about Transam's Get It Going service. If you were unlucky enough to make a mistake when assembling your kit, you could send it in for repair. Here's the final verdict. What I find funny is that they awarded a massive metal box 3 out of 5 for portability. It also scored 0 for disc compatibility, but this just wasn't quite available yet. In January 1980, ETI unveiled three new firmware options for the Triton. L6.1 had been upgraded with a new 2K monitor. L7.1 included an 8K Transam Components Limited Basic and came with the expansion motherboard and an EEPROM card on which to host it. L8.1 came in with a built-in Pascal and a Pascal compiler and a 4K monitor, amounting to 24K of firmware. And finally, L9.1 finally introduced a CPM compatible disk interface. With this, you could run up to four drives using 5 and a quarter or 8 inch floppies. In spring of 1980, the lineup was finalised with four option packs. L4.1 was no longer available, making L5.2 the new entry level. This improved on L5.1 with a larger basic and a larger monitor. L7.2, 8.2 and 9.2 seem to be the same as their respective 0.1 options. Also advertised in this catalogue were the expansion motherboard and the 8K EEPROM card that we've already seen, and a new Triton EEPROM programmer kit to go with it. If you had the L5.2 option of the Triton, you'd need to get hold of a code listing to operate the programmer. The higher options had the listing included in their firmware. A hundred quid would buy you an 8K RAM expansion. By the way, in today's money, that's over £430. Let's have a look at some of the highlights of the different offerings. L5.2 was a single board, 8080 based system with 3K of firmware installed on ROM. It had space for 1K of your own ROM, and it had room for 3K of RAM across 24 individual chips. It had a tape I.O a graphical character set, a 42-line expansion port, and could handle up to 64K of expansion memory. Here we can see the various commands that the monitor understood, and the commands that the 2.5K basic interpreter understood. As you can see, the options were quite limited, but at the time, I imagine this was wonderful for a home computer that you built yourself. At L7.2, the expanded monitor understood a few more commands and was available as an upgrade if you had an L5.2 system. They boast that when combined with the 8K EEPROM expansion containing the TCL Extended Basic, you have one of the most powerful and flexible systems available at the time. You can see here just how many more commands the Extended Basic introduced, including, for example, trigonometric functions and string handling. L7.2 also included TRAP, the Triton Resident Assembler Package, enabling assembly language programming to go with your basic package. The L8.2 system introduced the Transam Components Limited Pascal compiler, crammed into 24K of firmware across three fully populated EEPROM expansion cards. The TCL Pascal compiler was also made available on disk for customers who'd opted for the L9.2 CPM system for a cool £120. That's about 520 quid these days. And the L9.2 system was the top of the range, enabling the use of CPM and floppy drives. The pricing on this wasn't explicitly listed in the magazines, it was down as price on request, so with this catalogue we can finally have a look at the damage. So if you want the top of the range disk system with two floppy drives and a PSU, you're looking at nearly £1,600 or nearly £1,800 if you have it assembled. By today's money, according to the inflation calculator, that's over ten grand. And that just about spelt the end of the road for the Triton. These option packages remained until the announcement of the new Tuscan computer, which started at under £200, which must have been a milestone. 
After the Tuscan came the Cortex, which was ETI's first 16-bit computer, and might make a good topic for a future video if one can be found. Which leaves us with just one important question. Where are all the Tritons? From looking around online, I found evidence that a few people on forums might have a PCB. And I know that the Centre for Computing History in Cambridge have two Transam Tritons. And the other computer museums I've been to didn't know what the Triton was. So, at least as far as information on the internet goes, I think that's just about all there is. That is, except for this one. Yes, we have work to do. This is an L5.2 ETI Triton, and it looks a bit grimy, but it will clean up. It has all of its keys, they all seem to work, and inside does look good. We're going to have a full tour of the board, we're going to study all of the circuits, we're going to take a look at what's inside the ROMs, hopefully we'll be able to read everything out, because I know that the ROM dumps are very hard to come by. And the ultimate goal is going to be to get this thing working. There are a lot of games available for Tiny Basic, and I hope that by the end of this video series, we'll be playing them on this machine. Thank you all for watching. Keep an eye out for more videos on this machine, and in the meantime, take a look at our other videos and keep an eye out for more giveaways. 